So suppose we want to find the area between curves. Now before you start this video, you should already know how to find the area under a curve um, and an area between any two curves. Um, so this video is going to focus on like uh, trigonometry related functions with other functions. Um, so you should have the background set for you. Now the area between curves, um, the steps will follow the same way. Uh, the only difference is that you might just want to practice how to integrate cos uh, expressions, functions, if you need to. So let's say we have this question. Do pause the video and try it on your own or pause in between the steps to uh, try it on your own and check. So following the same exact steps as usual, you want to graph the function first. You want to graph them together and the GDC gives you the colored code. So I've done the blue for cos and the straight line, the red for the 1 over 4x. Now from here, I need to find the points of intersection. So I'm going to repeat it a couple of times using the second uh, calculate or second trace and then intersection. So I have three points of intersection here and I have those points. So basically the area I need to find is between those intersections. So I need to split my integral to fit those intersections. So the first area I need to find is this area, and then the second one is here. So the first area is gonna be bound from here to here, which is the first two points of intersection. And then the next one is gonna be bound from, let me change the color. Um, the next point is gonna be bound from here until here, which are the second and the third points of intersection. And in each case, the top function, and that's me saying it in quotation, is different. So in here, you have the red function at the top, and in here, you have the um, blue function at the top. So these are things that are still the same with regards to um, any area between curves. So this is me splitting up the integration. I know it goes from negative 3.6 to negative 2.1, and then from negative 2.1 to 1.3. I'm rounding it really quickly. Do write as many decimal places as you can within the integration because that's gonna help you understand how um, to write it up. So we subtract the lower function from the higher function for each integrand, so this is gonna be um, notice how the red one is at the top minus the cost and then the cost minus the 0 0.25. Now, um, you would use the GDC for this. So what you want to do in the GDC is you don't graph the original. Uh, you graph this new expression and you find the integral from this limit to this limit. And then you repeat again, you graph this whole expression into one line, into one y1 and so on and then you use these limits, and then you're gonna add up your answer. Now, I'm gonna just uh, quickly take on the side and show you how the integral, in case the question one expects you to integrate it as well, um, and then use the GDC to evaluate the answer, then you should be able to integrate these. So the first one is gonna integrate to, well, 0 0.25 is basically just the one over four X, and x here is to the power of 1. So I'm going to increase the power of x. It's going to be x to the power of 2. And I'm going to divide by the new power, which is 2. But be careful, you already have a 1 over 4 in there. So the 4 and the 2 are, will multiply, and you're going to get 1 over 8x squared. So my first one is going to be 1 over 8x squared. The negative cost, if you go back to like your table about what integrates to what, then the negative cost actually comes from sine. If you go back, if you like, uh, if you have your diagram sine, goes to cost, goes to negative sine, goes to negative cost, and then negative cost goes to sine. Um, so the integral is going to be the opposite, sorry, negative cost is going to, integrate to negative sign and not uh, sign. So I'm going to have negative sign x here. So my front arrows were the derivative and so a backward arrows would be the integral. So the integral of negative cos is negative sign. And this is going to evaluate from your uh, lower bound, upper bound, I'm not going to write them. And then you do the same thing here. The integral is going to be, so the integral of cos is now a sign. So 
So I have sine x and then this will have the same digits and I'll have lower bound and upper bound. Sorry about my pen. It's not um, writing clearly. So um, we have these expressions now and then you can use the GDC calculator to evaluate because obviously you wouldn't know what sine negative 2.133 and so on is. Um, I've done it, I've simplified it and it should give me 2.4, 1 to 3 significance figures. Okay. Um, I'd want you to try these questions from the Oxford um, AASL book. Uh, so these are quite good questions to um, test your skills on, just a mixture of different calculus skills in there. So do pause the video and try it, and then I'm going to explain how it's done. Um, so for this one, you need to find the value of k. Well, if you notice that the graph, the, the k is an x-intercept. So it's what x-intercept means is that it's uh, it's when the function is equal to zero. By definition, that's what the x-intercept is. It's when the output is equal to zero or the y-value is equal to zero. So it means that your e to the power of x sine x equals to zero. Now, how do you solve it? Which x would actually give you a zero? Well, this is exactly like saying, well, m times n equals to zero. If you have two functions multiplying giving you a zero, it means at least one of them is zero. So either e to the power of x is zero or sine of x equals to zero. Now, it's not possible to get e to the power of x equals to zero. Um, so the only option is that sine x is equal to zero. And the only time this happens is if x equals to zero and x equals to pi. You should, you should know your values for sine. So it means that, um, and keep in mind that we're dealing with calculus, so we have to use radians. So k is equal to pi for part a. Then part B asks you for the area of the shaded region. So all you have to do is do the area under the curve from zero until pi. So this is what you have to do. Now, integrating this is a bit advanced. Um, so you'll have to use the GDC for this. I'm just going to show you how uh, this is your GDC. You're going to go to second, calculate. You're going to do the integral, which is here. And you're going to start from zero. And you're going to go to pi. Press enter and it shades the region for you and it's 12.07. So using the GDC is 12.07. Again, just to be clear about the bounds because I know some students get confused, it's asking you for the lower limit. So it's just giving you a random number. It's telling you, is this the lower limit? You're going to be like, no, I want the lower limit to be zero. So just force the number in there. It's just going to type it for you and press enter. And then it's going to ask, is, what is the upper limit? Is it zero? You're going to be like, no, I want it to be pi. So you're going to press second pi. You're just going to force it in there. And it's going to type it for you. Press enter. And it's going to calculate it for you. Uh, one more question. So find the area of the region bounded between these two graphs. So something similar to what we've done in the beginning. Um, again, pause the video. Try it on your own. Um, following the same exact steps. I'm not going to go through the steps in too much detail, but I'm going to lay them out. So if you've done it, you're going to graph your function. This is what you're going to get. Um, I have my sine x as the blue function and then uh, the g of x as the red function. I found the points of intersection. These are the points of intersection. And so I know I, they, the integral has to go from 0 to 1.3 and then 1.3 to 4.1. Again, I'm rounding the numbers. I'm rounding them as I speak, but when you're writing the integral, make sure you substitute the full values. So then I need to do lower function, uh, higher function minus lower function. So in this case, I'm going to start with the um, uh, sine x because in the first interval, I have my blue function at the top, so sine x minus the cubic function. So with it, because it's at the lower part and then I'll have and notice how it's the minus and then a bracket in there just to be clear. And then I have the cubic functions because that's the top part in the second segment minus the sine x because it's the bottom part. Again, you're going to use the GDC to evaluate this, but in the case that you actually can use your own um, or you, you are expected to integrate, um, it is quite easy to integrate. I'm just going to do the um, first one. So the integral of sine x, again, you can draw your diagram. Sine goes to cos, goes to negative sine, goes to negative uh, cos, 
and then back again. And so if I'm talking about integrals, I need to work my way backwards. So the integral of sine is a negative cos. So I have a negative cos of x. And then think backwards. If you're going to drive negative cos of x, it should give you a back sine of x. And then this, I, I purposely picked the first one because I need to be careful about the signs. The negative will multiply out. So actually, the expression is going to be a positive x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x. And then I'm going to integrate this. So I'm going to get x to the power of 4 over 4 minus 5x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2, which is going to simplify to just uh, a 2x squared. Um, so what you're going to get is a... So this is the expression you're going to get evaluated from 0 until 1.275 and so on. Uh, so that's the first one, and obviously you want to use a calculator for this one because you don't know what cos of this is equal to. Um, and then you're going to repeat the same thing for the second expression. Um, so once you've done that, I've done the question, and it's going to be approximately 11.4 to 3 significant figures.